My first formal painting classes took place uh, at Stanford University. The day after I left high school, I went to college because the war was going on. So the idea was, and I was only 16 years old, so the idea was to get in as much education as I could before I got drafted into the military service. Anyhow, so I, I left uh, high school and six days later I was in college. I remember uh, my father asked me uh, what I would study in college and I was 16 year old looking at him and, and I said, I know I didn't know how to answer. I said, well, art, um, maybe. He said, well, that's not a serious subject to to earn a living. What what are you going to study? I don't know if I said it, but he made it clear that's what I should go to Stanford and study engineering. That lasted one year. Uh, I was out of my depth. Now this is now 1944 we're talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, things are quite different, 1944. So we all went to San Francisco, our class of figurative artists went to San Francisco to see figurative art. I don't know who the artist was that we were supposed to see. I wandered off into another room which was full of Mondrian paintings. And they'd been kept away from me. I didn't know about it. I'd never heard, well, I might have heard of them, but I never saw them. And I was astonished to say, my God, can you do this? Why not, you know? And it went on from there. It went on from there because I went home and I started doing abstract painting. And, uh, I got thrown out of the art department. There's no way to follow Mondrian. You know, he went into these totally geometric uh, grids, quite beautiful in their way, but uh, a dead end that I perceive for me. I did everything I could think of in painting and I started to get a little more, uh, you know, I, I got into this rigid geometric painting and I didn't stay there very long, a la Vazzarelli and the whole group that I was hanging out with. Uh, and to get out of that, I, the paintings I made got to be quite direct and fluid. Uh, and. I realized that in doing that, I was going backwards in time to uh, expressionist kind of painting. And so that was another uh, curtain that came down in front of me. I, I just, I didn't want to go backwards in painting. I don't remember the transition from that to things that moved to movies and so forth. I suppose that came like a stroke of lightning, but I, I can't remember that happening as a, you know, a moment of uh, enlightenment. I, I don't think you could call my film slick, but at the same time, uh, I would hope they have punch. The obvious unslickness clumsiness or whatever you might call it. Uh, I could get away with it because of the basic difference between my kind of continuity and the narrative mm -hmm. dramatic continuity that contaminates film for the most part. Uh, and so that that's what I tried to do. And, uh, you know, the handmade titles and all of that goes along with it. I don't know, I had this 
idea that the artworks I made could have some kind of life, but I didn't want to, them to go anthropomorphic, become animals or people. So I thought of sound and so forth, and I came up with movement, and then ultra slow movement, and that's what I ended with. That was the other question, color, should they, if, since they're moving, I didn't want to get too elaborate, should they be colored and, and suggest other things rather than just lumps that move. Well, I love the way you put this show together. Films next to paintings. And I'm, I feel very honored and uh, impressed. Uh, I could live here. But uh, yeah, I know. Don't worry, I won't. <laughs>